he knows the door sills, raised door sills.
or are any of the birds and animals that you might run across. At any rate, this battlefield came about way back in the 1850s when this was private land and this was not the plantation house. Shalmet Plantation, the big house, was further to towards the river and literally Andrew Jackson blew it up so that the British who were coming across field couldn't use it. If you look way across field, you'll see a British flag flying out there because eventually the British would be coming in this direction. If you look way past that, you'll see radio towers. The British literally came through Lake Bourne and about where the radio towers is where the lake is. They caught a natural waterway, a bayou, which goes through swamps, and at one time there was swamps out in those areas, much of which has been drained off today. And they caught a man-made canal and went right to the river. And surprise, Monsieur Villeray on his plantation. There were five plantations in a row. The Villeray plantation is, was originally on the other side of the refinery out there. Today, none of the plantation houses exist any longer. Over there by the refinery area was the Delaron Plantation, the Chalmette Plantation, and in a minute you'll be able to cross over uh, what had been a mill canal, which Jackson would widen into a uh, canal and flood it with river water so that the British couldn't get over it very easily. And that canal today is a drainage ditch, and that was the, Del uh, the uh, Rodriguez Plantation. And over where the slip is, where we sometimes have ships come in, that was the McCarthy Plantation, and that was Jackson's headquarters during the battle. At any rate, they surprised Monsieur Villeray on his plantation, surrounded and captured him. But just like in the movies, Monsieur Villeray had a tussle and a fight with the British and jumped over the banister because his plantation was a small plantation, a raised house off the ground with a banister around, headed towards the swamps with the British in hot pursuit. Knowing he could not run the British, he climbed a tree to hide. Now, this part is probably a story, but I like to tell it anyway, so I'll tell you. <laughs> Underneath his tree and looking up, they said, was his favorite hunting dog. According to the story, Monsieur Villery had to climb down, kill his favorite dog, bury it with leaves, climb the tree and hide. The British go under and he's able to escape to New Orleans. Jackson had a little over 6,000 troops spread out all over the area. He'd only have about 2,000 on the ground. There were 10,000 British in the Gulf, and over 6,000 would meet us on the battlefield. At any rate, the British had already gotten themselves in a fix by coming in this way, because now they are at the river, between the river and the swamp areas. And that's the way they would have to come in. At any rate, as soon as Jackson found out, he's got his mishmash of army together, regular army, regular uh, some extra militia, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee riflemen, citizens of New Orleans, all nationalities, including the first African battalion to fight for the United States. These were free men that had been formed under the Spanish and later and, uh, would come back and fight for the Battle uh, of New Orleans, but for War 1812. They would be on this battlefield. And American Indians and also pirates. <laughs> now, while Jean Lafitte is always supposed to be the guy that won the battle, it was really Jackson. Without Jackson, we were probably lost. Jackson's determination and rashness is what won. Jean Lafitte was never on this battlefield, even though he did help the United States. He mapped out the swamps and ran messages for Jackson during the battle, the major battle. At any rate, he always gets the credit. It's okay. Now, Jackson gets his army together and he marches them straight down here, and this is May the 23rd. 1814, the British are at the river. But the British have bivouacked. Had they marched in, they might have caught us. But they had stopped, rested, got the first hot meal they'd had in months. It is December, and while it is not freezing just yet, it is cold. The weather will help us because it turns nasty, cold, and rainy. And this was not a smooth feel. This was a cut sugarcane feel that now the British had to come through mud and cane stubble to get to this point. In the meantime, Jackson marches his men out in the middle of the evening. A boat goes down there, bombs bards them, and they are astounded. The British are running around, getting into their lines. Everything becomes confusing, even for Jackson's men, because the smoke and the fog rolling in mix together, and nobody knows who they're shooting at. Jackson will lose many men in this because they will get behind the lines and get captured. But this rash movement on Jackson's part 
convinces the British that we have more men than we actually have, and they will pull back and wait for reinforcements and Major General Packingham to lead them. Jackson will have time to come to this area, widen the drainage ditch, build a barricade behind it, and today we do have a rebuilt part of the barricade. The original barricade went from the river all the way to the Cypress Swamps. In a few minutes, you'll have time, if you wish to, to walk over to where the cannons are by the flag, and that is the rebuilt barricade. Jackson will have his men behind that, and now the British must come straight forward. They will attack two more times. They will attack, uh, they hadn't attacked yet. They'll attack two times and be repulsed. And on January the 8th, 1815, will be the major fighting. It'll be two hours of fighting with 30 minutes where it is most of the battle will be done. What happens? Packingham has a great idea. He'll attack on both sides of the river because we have cannons on the other side. So he gets his men all this time to sit back and start making basimes, twigs to throw in the canal, ladders to climb the barricade. On the morning of January the 8th, he tries to ferry his men across the river, forgetting one thing, the river. The current is going so fast, his men get pushed farther than he expected, and literally he just gives up that plan and attacks on this side of the river. He brings his men literally from across field, from this side and from that side, to concentrate on the far end of the battlefield, so while the Americans are busy with that end, he can sneak the Highlanders along the levee road and attack at the barricades. And literally, they were getting over and fighting at the top of the barricades, when all of a sudden, in the middle of the field, the men start turning and going back. Some of them had passed up the fascines and ladders they'd hidden in the middle of the field. And realizing they didn't have them, turned. By turning, it caused confusion. And now they were behind the area, and the men that were supposed to be following them with the weapons are now in front. In the meantime, Packingham, seeing what's going on, rides forward. The horse is shut out from under him. He grabs another mountain, rides forward again. He is mortally wounded and will die. And every officer but one will be wounded on these fields, and nearly all of them will pass away right here. We will end up losing only eight Americans in that battle on this side. And out of the British, 2,000 soldiers will be wounded, and 300 will die. In the meantime, when all this is going on, the Highlanders seeing what's going on, cross the field to help and become perfect shooting targets. One Kentuckian said all he could see was smoke. He couldn't even see anybody to shoot at. But in the middle of all this commotion, he heard, seize fire on the American side. And as the smoke rose off the battlefield, all he saw was a sea of red. The dead and dying British. But we've got the other side of the river. Out of the woods come the British. Right about all this time when all this commotion is going on, the Americans are so astounded, they literally leave the cannon and some head for New Orleans <laughs> with the British in hot pursuit. Others will fight valiantly, and we will lose more men on that side of the river that day than we will lose here. But at any rate, the British have won on the other side of the river. But unfortunately, they have lost the major battle. They have had sounded retreat, and the battle is lost. The United States will win January the 8th, 1815, the last battle for the War of 1812. We declared war against Britain for taking some of our seamen off the ships, and also because for the United States, we wanted to prove that we were a country and no longer a colony of Britain. So there were many, many things that went into the reasons why we declared war. Both countries were already in the process of peace treaty, and the peace treaty had already been signed when this battle took place. But it had not been ratified. So had Britain won, she might have thrown the treaty out the window and we may be British here today. So by us winning the battle, it also later down the line helped with the opening of the West. Had we not won, the United States may have not had the westward expansion. At any rate, very quickly, I'm not going to tell you about the monument too much. The monument was finished started in the 1850s, but later finished by the 1900s. There's a plaque in front of it. We also have information about the monument, because I know many of you are feeling the heat. So if you need information, I'll tell you particularly, but you can read information about the monument. This building was not here during the battle. It was built in the 1830s, and it has been changed many times by different families, and originally it was a summer house to get away from the heat of the summer, as we all know, and the fever epidemics. 
different families lived in it. The last family that would live in it year-round, not only in the summer, would be General Beauregard's son, Rene Beauregard, and that's why we call it the Beauregard House. There's information in the far room over here about the house, and we also have some information down here at our visitor center. Feel free to walk around. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you.